Right, this is about adaptations. So if I'm, let's say, a polar bear, I'm gonna have really sharp teeth, and that is an advantage to me because that helps me catch my prey and kill it. So adaptations help organisms compete for resources in the habitat that they live in. And if I've got lots of good adaptations, I'm more likely to survive and I'm more likely to breed. And basically adaptations kind of divide into two types, let's say. Um, there are the physical adaptations, the anatomical adaptations, so what colour I am or the shape of my teeth or whether I've got a long neck. And then there are behavioural adaptations, which is how I behave, what, what I do, do I hibernate, um, what are my strategies. And so those are the two adaptations you need to know about. Right, let's look at some adaptations of a bear, which is a predator. They have an anatomical adaptation. Both their eyes are on the same side of their head. We call that binocular vision. That helps it judge distances very well to find out how far away its prey is. They also have behavioural adaptations. They breed at the time of year so that when their cubs are born, there's lots of salmon to eat. They also have very good hunting skills and they're very good at lying by a river and waiting for that salmon to come along. Salmon are the prey. They're eaten by grizzly bears. They have a couple of anatomical adaptations to help it escape being eaten. They have eyes on each side of its head. This gives it a large range of vision so it looks out for predators on both sides of its head. It is also streamlined so that it can swim fast through water. There is also a behavioural adaptation of salmon. They swim in large groups, which reduces each individual's chance of being eaten. In addition to this, you need to know about some other organisms which have other strategies to avoid being eaten. So some have a sting, some have warning colourations on their body, such as stripes, and some are able to camouflage well so they, that they can't be seen by predators.